गुड आफ्टरनून स्टूडेंट्स गुड आफ्टरनून सर सो ड्यूरिंग द लास्ट क्लास वी हैव डिस्कस अबाउट द टाइप्स ऑफ टैक्सेस देन वी हैव आल्सो डिस्कस अबाउट द वेरियस डिफरेंट टाइप्स ऑफ डायरेक्ट एंड इनडायरेक्ट टैक्सेस एंड वी हैव स्टार्टेड विद द प्रिंसिपल्स ऑफ टैक्सेशन so as we discuss in the previous class the principles of taxation is based upon ability to pay principal uh, that is depends upon how much the tax burden can be accommodated by the individual so the uh, it is purely depends upon the individuals uh, ability to pay Uh, if we do, if we emphasize more on the direct taxes, it is evidently seen that depends upon the income level, the tax rates will differ. So the ability of the taxpayers will uh, determine the how much the uh, it, it, uh, the tax has been levied for individual to individual, because their income level is uh, differentiating, and their ability to pay is also differentiating. and the principal the another principle is based upon the benefit whether they are receiving it or not and as say uh, it is also mentioned that the tax itself we know it is not having any direct relationship with or the there is no direct benefit with the uh, the benefit and those tax payers could not able to expect the equivalent amount of uh return from the tax he or she pays but we can able to uh, uh measure the amount of money has been imposed as taxes has to be somewhat has to be equivalence with the benefits is he or she the tax payer or the common public who receives it so that kind of equivalence should be there that that is called as benefit principle that benefit may not be uh, direct but indirectly we get many benefits like the subsidy on transportation uh, road facilities then uh, the uh, availability of water then setting up of parks street lights roads infrastructure all these are public related expenditure and has been constructed for the benefit of the people so that benefit has to be reached as per the the amount of money has been collected from the people as taxes so that is called as a benefit principle and the another one is it is based upon the uh, the market so any market uh, the tax system should not interfere the market uh, with a special reference to the market decision making Uh, any kind of imposing taxation should not affect the market fluctuations but in general where when the price when the taxes tax rates are revised for uh, goods and services definitely it will influence on the market to diminish the demand and uh, uh, reduce the supply but it should not have a direct impact with respect to the market decisions such as individual pricing strategies individual demand and supply conditions those things should not should not be interpreted so in such a manner the the tax rates should be levied to the public and moreover we have to check the the government has to check while they are imposing the taxation that should not have any kind of complexity to the people and corruption it should not leads to corruption so the taxation should be very transparent and it should not have any complexity in receiving and paying the taxes and we have to avoid the uh, the corruptions should not happen lead to the imposing of taxation on various goods and services and also from the direct income tax or direct taxes levy up to this we have discussed then we have moved to distribution of tax burdens 
how the tax burdens has to be distributed. The distributed in the sense it has to be spread across the people. It should not be uh, uh, so skewed with the one particular group of people. It should not be uh, uh, burden should not be imposed to the one particular group of people according to their ability, according to their amount of money income, that distribution of taxes to be spreaded across the people. And various principles like uh, political pressures and uh, goals, uh, the government goals can direct the uh, uh, government's tax policy. So tax policy is purely depends upon the various principles as we discussed in the previous slide. It should be principle of equity or equality, then principle of uh, benefit, then principle of ability to pay theory. I mean principle of ability to pay taxes. So by applying the various principles, we can able to uh, uh, distribute redistribute or equalize the spread of tax burdens to the all people in the society. And based on the political pressures also, our tax policy will change. How uh, depends upon the political policy, the tax rate will differ. Uh, if you take an example of uh, uh, the ruling party and opponent party. Uh, suppose if the uh, ruling party the government is announcing any kind of new uh, tax policy. So the government, the opponent party will not allow them to execute immediately because it is affecting the common people. So uh, any kind of policy which is affecting the common people, it has to be uh, not approved or entertained by the other political parties. So based on the political parties also, we need to restructure and modify the taxation policy. Then the, the goals of the government, what are the goals of the government to achieve the equilibrium between collection of taxes and the spendings, government spendings or government expenditure. So to enhance the government expenditure, the government has to enhance the total revenue collected from both direct and indirect taxes. So that has goal, they have to keep it in mind based on that uh, the government is decided to go for an appropriate tax policy. The main aim of those tax policy has to uh, uh, distribute the tax burdens equally. And what follows is a discussion of some of the leading principles that can shape decisions about taxation because the benefit principle that is an important thing uh, ability to pay principle that is also depends uh, that is also determining the how much taxation has to be uh, levied on various income group group of people as we also discussed in the previous classes whether the the, uh, the imposition of taxes should be progressive or regressive or proportional progressive means the percentage of taxation will increase as the income increases. Proportional means the percentage of taxes will remain the same. So uh, proportionally, the tax amount will increase when the income increases. As I told the example of, uh, if anyone is getting uh, uh, one lakh rupees salary, so 10% tax will be levied. So uh, those people will pay 10,000 rupees as taxes. In the same society, if someone is getting 5 lakhs means for him also same 10%, but he has to pay 50,000 rupees for 5 lakh rupees. So obviously the tax rates will also be proportionally, tax rate will re remain same, but tax amount proportionately will increase as income increases. And the third one is also playing an important role in determination of the tax policy that is regressive taxation method. So in regressive taxation also, when it is opposite to progressive, when the, uh, the uh, lesser income groups will pay higher rate of interest, when income grows, the rate, the I, I mean not a higher rate of interest, higher rate of taxation. The lower income people, they have to pay higher level of income tax 
higher percentage of income tax and when the income increases your tax rate will come down why the tax rate is comes down because the justification what they are providing because of the regressive taxation system because in india the regressive taxation is not there we have the policy of progressive taxation as income increases the tax rates also will increase and for regressive taxation as income increases they will reduce the tax percentage because the higher income people has to pay more percentage of taxes but if you reduce some percentage of taxes even though their amount of taxes will be paid high but the percentage will be comparatively lesser than proportional and progressive taxation and some sort of criticism is also there uh, for the countries uh, who is imposing regret regressive taxation is encourages some of the uh, corporates so that corporates when they are earning more they have to pay lesser percentage but uh, the common people middle class people when they are earning less they have to make uh, more percentage higher percentages of income tax and even uh, with respect to the indian cases also we can quote some of the examples uh, the individual income tax has not revised for the last uh, three, uh, three four years but the uh, the income tax lapse for corporates has been declined from 40% to now it is 25% so that is a kind of nature of regressive taxation system but we are not telling the uh, regressive taxation system but the government is telling uh, to promote the corporates to prom promote employment opportunities they are reducing the corporate income tax so that is a different story but that is also a kind of nature of uh, uh, tax policy that is all aims to distribute the tax burdens among the people up to this clear students yes sir yes so uh, we have also discussed uh, what is horizontal equity we are going to discuss about the vertical equity also first we will understand what is equity equity is nothing but uh, the proportion of income tax uh, taxes to be levied uh, uh, to the uh, uh, to the uh, uh, tax payers liable tax payers that means those who are able, able to pay the taxes in to be equated or equally distributed the principle of horizontal equity assumes that the person in the same or similar position for example if a group of people is earning 1 lakh rupees for example some the same pe some people working in uh, industrial sector they are earning 1 lakh rupees but some people is working in agriculture sector they are also earning 1 lakh rupees so the uh, uh, peoples or persons assumed to be a similar position or same position the taxes has to be subject to their uh, uh, ability to pay the taxation so that it should be a same tax liability they should have they have to pay a same amount of rate of taxes to the government in practice this equality principle is often disregarded as a, or we also discussed in the previous classes because we are not looking into uh, a deeper uh, uh, analysis on how much the people are exactly earning uh, even though the income tax department is uh, analyzing but certain things we could not able to exactly find out for example the income earned by the uh, farmers it is not be counted because they are getting the payment not through banks i mean when they are selling the paddy or when said when they are selling any agriculture commodities they have they will get in form of money only cash only so that there will be bank transaction and uh, we could the uh, the uh, government authorities could not able to find out what is the real income of the farmers and uh, the homeowners when they are having some people having some four five floors they are uh, uh, letting it for rent so those amount of money will also be included in the their yeah, income source so that they are also somewhat it is disregarded or we could not able to follow the equality of the principle they are they are being escaped from paying the income tax whereas the salary income holders uh, the salary income earners has to pay the income tax in a proper manner because all their salaries should be accounted 
So that is what uh, I even sometimes the exclusion of interest on government securities. Sometimes when we buy uh, securities, uh, securities will have some inter uh, taxation as we saw in the previous slides, uh, one type of uh, uh, indirect taxes has been levied on securities, take security transaction uh, taxes. But in security transaction but, uh, uh, taxes also, there is a provision called 15G and 15H. Anybody knows what is 15G and 15H? Students, you got the question? Gerard? Uh, sir, I don't know, sir. I don't know the answer. Okay, no problem. Okay, sir. For, uh, uh, there is a possibility of exclusion of interest earnings or interest uh, income for the individuals or senior citizens. When they are buying government securities, securities issued by not, a pri not private but government agencies or government companies. For example, uh, if you take uh, two uh, uh, companies, they are providing securities. For example, one company is uh, IRCTC. IRCTC is belongs to Indian Railways. So when you are buying IRCTC securities or bonds. When you are getting the returns in the form of interest rate, if it is going above 10,000 rupees, you are liable to pay 10% returns taxation, right? Yes, sir. Yes. But whereas the same kind of bond, if you buy from private securities, for example, ICICI Bank Securities, ICICI Lombard or ICICI Direct, you, can, you are getting some uh, uh, 20 lakhs rupees worth of security. While you are selling that security or returning that security, you will get a return amount of some amount of interest. For example, for 20 lakhs rupees, you will get some at least a minimum of 10 percentage of return, 2 lakhs rupees. 2 lakh rupees means it is greater than 10,000. For private things, when they are transaction, so a transaction is nothing but your income when you're selling the security, when you're getting the maturity. When it is goes above 10,000 rupees, obviously you have to pay the taxation. So the tax will be automatically deducted for 2 lakhs rupees, 20,000 rupees deducted and you will be paid your principal of 2 lakh, 20 lakhs rupees plus 1 lakh 80,000 rupees after the deduction of 20,000 rupees income tax on interest earnings from the securities you bought from the ICICA direct. But in case of government securities, you can have an option called 15G and 15H, but even uh, this 15G and 15H is available for regular fixed deposit also. You can submit in the bank or wherever you have the securities account you have to submit the income tax declaration called a 15G. That 15G declaration, which talks about my amount of investment. Please put your attention, please. My amount of initial investment is 20 lakh rupees I paid. For that 20 lakhs rupees, only I am getting this 2 lakh rupees interest. And for this principal amount, 20 lakhs I earned from my income, for the last two years and for the last two years to earn this 20 lakhs rupees, I have already paid income tax to the government. And here, when we are getting the interest from the investment of the 20 lakh rupees, you have to declare that this is already the income earned, then I am just earning the interest for my securities so that you have to declare and give your bank card details and if you submit at 15G, it would be deducted. Your interest income from government securities would be deducted. In that form, we have two differentiation. One is 15G and 15H. In that 15G is meant for people uh, uh, less than 60 years 
and 15H is meant for uh, the people who are above 60 years, that is for the senior citizens. Uh, so that opportunity, we can make use of it and so that we can exclude from the taxation. So uh, uh, while, while the horizontal equity is talks about equal income has to be earned by an individual, equal uh, amount of taxation to be paid, that is horizontal equity, that horizontal equity has been uh, uh, lapsed or it can be overrided by these important things such as the uh, uh, certain violations, political pressures and economic policy such as the tax advantages granted to the farmers. Uh, for farmers income there will be a, a certain advantages has been given and uh, for uh, homeowners when they are collecting rent they are not showing the uh, 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 income earned from rent and uh, the, some people will not show their income earned from informal sector then that is all uh, the, there is also a possibility of uh, escape of taxation from government securities by providing that 15G and 15H documents or uh, uh, such kind of provision is available in the Income Tax uh, Act. So this is the problem of horizontal equity so that we could not be able to follow the horizontal equity. Uh, for one example also I can quote here. Suppose uh, if an individual is earning 2 lakh rupees, they are liable to pay 20,000 rupees as income because sir, I am uh, two, uh, one month I am uh, hard working and getting the 2 lakh rupees, 20,000 rupees they are deducting from my salary. And in the same case, when somebody is easily getting house rent of 2 lakh rupees, but they are not getting any income tax because they, there is a uh, probability of escaping without showing the interest uh, uh, income and from the rent. Likewise, the other parameters also like uh, securities, uh, 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 interest on government securities and some of the uh, uh, farmers income. And there will always be a debate over the tax reform has often centered on whether deviations from equal treatment of equals are justified. So there will be a, always a, a, a debate over the uh, tax reforms, whether we are following the uh, same principle of equality or equity. So that the problem of horizontal equity always be in question, whether we can able to achieve that horizontal equity or not. So you got the point, what is horizontal equity? Same tax rates for the similar kind of income manners. Yes, Sanjay? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Now we'll next we'll move on to the next topic. Horizontal equity, I'll come back to you. Uh, it is in some other slide, so that we'll move on to the effects now. So, what are the effects of taxation? Okay, now we'll have some interactions. I request all of you to enable your video. Before we are proceeding for the analysis of the effects of taxation, I, students, am I audible to you? Yes, Sanjay. Yes, Gerard. Others are not there. Bhavana, uh, then. Karen, yes, so what is your opinion on taxation? What is, what is your opinion on uh, the effect of taxation? In general, you tell, uh, if you tax more, 
what will happen if tax less what will happen yes srishti singh sir like uh, it depends upon the income of the person if uh, less earning uh, person is like paying more tax it will like as you told it will uh, reduce his consumption level so he will try to skip and all those stuff so yeah and uh, taxation effect of taxation is basically it helps to generate the revenue for the government to provide services to the people also um so government side if you look into it it is good if you look into it to the public side it is not good yeah and depends upon sometimes different situations What? also like uh, we read in the previous semester also like the taxes are imposed on different stuffs so like the taxes are imposed to sometimes reduce the imports uh, so they reduce the exports from the other uh, yeah imports from the other countries and they also help to pro promote domestic to avoid the dumping of the goods and all those stuff yeah that is an international yeah and if they take if the government take appropriate taxes uh, it will help them to create a good infrastructure for the economy also yeah but there are certain loopholes in the taxation system also yeah this one good yes uh, sanjay yes sir yes what is your uh, opinion on uh, the taxation the effects of taxation if you are uh, imposing taxes yes sir uh, that is good or bad how we get uh, sir uh, taxation must be balanced actually uh, because if we impose more taxes uh, then there will be uh, an additional huge burden on the people and uh, if there is less taxation then the social overheads like social and economic overheads provided by the government um, those will be lesser for the people so uh, balance is essential okay so that you are uh, you are arguing that we need to go for the maximum social advantage principle am i right ah uh, yes sir yes sir exactly that you have to quote wherever uh, yes, relevant sir. is there you have to apply the theory okay yes, that is the uniqueness of economics all the yes, practical sir. problems can be solved through the economic theory yes okay they even uh, what srishti has told uh, that is also we can apply the um, maximum social advantage and moreover we can also apply um, the principle of uh, taxation uh, srishti you got it yes sir yes you can apply this Uh, uh sir uh, while we are uh, going for any kind of taxation system then we need to follow the uh, horizontal equity or we need to so these are all the words you have to capture you have to connect and moreover why i am uh, i want to talk you people uh you will get some better understanding and moreover these important points can be possible to ask in uh, some of the competitive examinations when you are writing competitive examination they will ask what is horizontal equity in uh, uh, taxation system that time you have to correlate okay uh, yes, next we'll move on to gerard yes sir taxation is absolutely essential uh, because uh, if government wants to do uh, uh, something for the betterment of the people by uh, giving them good uh, facilities uh, for example in in terms of health uh, different other infrastructures etc they will have to have income uh, to to uh, to build for example uh, a good hospital uh, in, in different other ways as well so if they don't have income means th that is not possible so uh, as sanjay said it should so be a balance in favor of you are also in favor of taxation yes sir but that that should be balanced okay uh, what are its implications yeah, when you are taxing it uh, how it is uh, impacting the people for example i'll tell you 
there was a, a big debate was going on while we imposed the um, gst system uh, you know that uh, 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 yeah, a kind of uh, uh, village based or uh, um, home based burfis like a homemade chocolate you know that yes sir yes uh, there is a sweet uh, uh, candy called burfi uh, it will be come in different shape one is one common square type or it will be like a ball type you have you seen that uh, made out of made out of uh, jaggery yes, sir. jaggery and uh, what is that a uh, groundnut before yes, gst sir. yes before gst uh i mean when value added tax is there uh, since that particular commodity is from micro enterprises or household enterprises or it also be called as home based commodity or home based production in traditional economics what we call it uh, uh, in gandhian thought we'll call them at as a cottage industry right uh that before gst there was no uh, value added tax for that particular commodity if uh, uh, a small entrepreneur when they are producing that particular commodity with a investment of 500 rupees per day maximum is 500 rupees 500 rupees he'll buy uh, some uh, 150 rupees jaggery 150 rupees that uh, groundnut or that another one uh, uh the bengal gram dal something uh they will buy and they will uh, heat and they will mix it and put it in one form then they will pack it with either they will pack or they will give it in to the retailers uh it doesn't have it doesn't require modern technology nothing is there full and full of uh, the labor uh, participation is more there so uh, in the previous Uh, tax system value added tax regime we don't have any taxation if it is 500 rupees investment then he will sell it for 550 rupees or 600 rupees per kg he will get per kg of production then he will sell it to the wholesaler then wholesaler will add another 50 rupees 600 rupees per kg it will go 100 grams it is 6 uh, 60 rupees even if you buy in pieces either it will be some 4 rupees or 5 rupees that particular commodity after the gst it will become uh, the taxation has become 18% for that particular commodity because it is included in the gst regime that commodity so because of this problem the price of the particular commodity has revised to the additional of 18% and plus after after that some education tax will come swachh bharat tax will come uh, all together 20% when it is 500 rupees now it become 20% extra 20% means 100 rupees extra um, for 500 rupees 10% 50 20% 100 rupees now it is become 600 rupees now because of this uh, the people who is producing Uh, the entrepreneurs small scale entrepreneurs their investment is 500 rupees per day their employment is becoming question so the taxation is affecting employment the taxation is affecting investment the taxation is also affecting the production and because of previously i don't i don't pay any taxes for the consumption of this candy now i have to pay 18% of the percentage of taxation to the particular candy now i will also reduce when price increases demand for the particular commodity will also price increases the demand for particular commodity will decrease decline so uh, uh, when my consumption while increase in uh, implementation of the taxation it is also reducing the 
consumption i am talking about an individual suppose if we are talking about the n number of commodities which is produced across india for the nation we just calculate how much of the drop in investment how much of drop in aggregate consumption how much of drop in aggregate production so uh, what i am saying i mean what is the theory is saying because of the taxation uh, it will negatively impact on production consumption distribution and also investment what is your uh, uh, counter argument for this bhavana Uh, sir, uh, taxes is, is very important. Uh, we can't uh, reduce it, sir, because uh, as if the government, uh, you know, takes that amount to for the welfare uh, schemes and programs. So taxation is important, and at the same time, uh, the government has to see that the production consumption will only get uh, affected. You're saying it will affect. You are agree with me? Yes, sir. It it get affected, but the government has to see, has to reduce that uh, impact. Hmm. Reduce the burden. Yes, yeah, sir. But... Okay. Okay. Um. Then uh, only for businesses which has turned over more than twenty lakhs, right, sir? Yes, Emmanuel. So GST is applicable only for businesses. With more than twenty lakhs turnover per year. Yeah, very good, very good. So that so uh, that, that candy uh, won't be. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. For micro industries, this won't affect them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But in case when they are uh, accumulating all these small small people, uh, yeah. that five hundred rupees, I told no, that five hundred rupees. Uh, they could not access to the direct market. What they will do? They will sell or uh, surrender the finished commodity to a middleman. Middleman will collect from various individuals. Then he will send it to the wholesaler, right? Correct. Uh, when it is goes into the hands of wholesaler. the volume of business will cross your limit right yes sir uh, because every individual suppose if i am in in an in an in interior place village i am producing that candy can i able to go every day to the market and sell the commodity and come back it is not possible uh, and moreover even for the micro level household enterprises the government has providing a subsidy government is providing some amount of relaxation you are you got a very good point uh, for that purpose only i am just explaining it when it is come to the market as a whole when it is combined it reaches that minimum value then how the uh, the end seller will calculate this is the total amount of stocks i have when it is crosses the 20 lakh rupees then i am liable to pay taxes as i am a wholesaler big dealer of that burpi i have to bear the 18% tax why unnecessarily i have to bear the tax then he will shift to the uh, the uh, retailer and our wholesaler or he will shift to the uh, producer and producer what they will do what we can bear at the time of production but the end user only has to bear so that the end user has to pay 18% it will be distributed across all people even though i am coming under the very meager amount of investment or turnover when it is moves into the uh, the hands of wholesaler that will be cross the limit of the minimum value that is why i took that example You got it, Emmanuel. Yes, sir. I am understood. Yes. In case if I am producing, I am only selling in the market directly. Then no worries, because as per the rules, uh, yes. I won't be uh, eligible 
or as again we can use the theory here uh, what theory we can use what principle we can use ability to pay principle right yes sir when, uh, so ability to pay principle means that time i don't have ability to because my investment itself 500 rupees my total value of the goods is 600 rupees i am getting only 100 rupees per day what i am going to uh, earn or what i am going to pay taxes that don't come in case of when it is goes into the market through various channels the volume of amount or the volume of business will be seen. fine yes we can have some other discussions so anybody else want to share yes we have four more minutes four uh, eight more minutes anybody can i call somebody Mm. Minakshi. Kumari Krishna. Um, yes, sir. Yes. What is your uh, uh, opinion on this? Um, about taxation, sir. Yes, yes. Sir, I think taxation is very important because that is um, a very major so, uh, source of revenue for the government. So if the government has to take up welfare activities for the society, then the government will have to have some sort of revenue to work on it. So taxation is very important, but what can be done is that um, the government can um, uh, distribute the taxes in a way that, uh, which is, um, so the government can apply uh, high taxes on uh, companies which have a bigger turnover and the companies which are like micro industries or something like that uh, they should the government should make sure that they do not take a lot of tax from these small companies so something like that so i think yes yes uh, uh, you're saying we can apply the principle of equity yes sir okay. good shaktikant shaktikant Nitin, Animal Thomas, Arvind, Sakshi Yadav, okay fine. So, uh, Karen Mary Jos, okay, fine. So, we'll, uh, um, I appreciate uh, your efforts, uh, those who are participated in the discussion. Uh, now, we'll move on to the, the major uh, the effects of taxation on uh, production. So we'll see on all angles, production, distribution, and consumption. Uh, first one is the mainly, uh, uh, because production is one of the important aspect in determining the GDP, right? Production is one of the important aspect or element in determining the GDP, am I right? Right or wrong? Yes, sir. Yes, no. sir. Yes, sir. Okay. How? What is the definition of GDP? What is the expansion of GDP? Gross domestic product. Okay. What is the definition? Uh, the, the production uh, in a country within a year. Okay. Production of all the goods and services in a particular year, normally one financial year. We can also uh, derive like 
gdp is equal to c plus i plus g x minus m right yes sir yes sir so aggregate consumption aggregate investment plus aggregate government expenditure c plus i plus g when consumption goes up then the amount of goods and services production also will go up when investment goes up the amount of quantity of uh, uh, production also will go up when the government expenditure goes up production will go up and when you export more we can able to earn more revenue minus import because import is going out currency or money is going out of the country and the commodities which is produced um, commodities which are imported it is not produced from india so that we are not calculating imports we are detecting the import correct ah yes sir okay so this gdp is based upon the aggregate production so any country's development is based upon their national income and gdp that national income and gdp is depends upon the production and this production is affects adversely when the taxation is more and it is impacts positively when there is a relaxation in taxation you got it so main effects of taxation on production is effects on ability to work effects on ability to save and effects on ability to invest these elements which involves in determination of or the impact of the uh, uh, impact on uh, impact of taxation on production first one is the effect on ability to work when in tax reduces it reduces the disposable income sir how it is uh, uh, first we have to understand what is disposable income then only we can able to get the point what is disposable income sir the money which we have left after paying the taxes which we can spend directly uh disposable income is a net income after deduction of taxes very good sanjay so the disposable income we can also call it as a real income or the uh, uh the uh, take home salary what modern words take home salary that disposable income will reduce by imposing more taxes if the tax rates are high the disposable income will be less so that the buying capacity and consumption expenditure of the people will decline and because of the decline in the purchasing power and reducing the capacity of purchasing power will leads to reduce the standard of living of people and it is also simultaneously affecting the ability to work by a by the people because when your standard of living is comes down your health condition also will come down because of your income is less that will reduce your ability to work more and more because anyway this some whatever we are earning uh that is what one uh, one in uh, one debate uh, uh, about gst i'll give me one minute i'll tell you that one fellow uh, is uh, selling particular commodity he is uh, incurring many hurdles and he is investing so much of money and uh, the profit is for his uh, business is 10% he has invested some amount of money one or some 10 lakh rupees invested and he is getting 10 percentage of the interest i mean uh, returns 
but the product he is selling he has to pay 28% taxes so what he told the government you take my profit and give me the taxes then because i am uh, putting so much of efforts i am uh, uh, putting so much of uh, investment i have to pay uh, so much of amount to the bank as interest and uh, i am in the uh, high risk of either profit or loss to generate profit i am putting so much of effort my profit level is 10% and without doing anything the government is imposing 28% so that better you give me the tax to me i'll be so much happy you take my full profit of 10% like that uh, because the tax rate is become more than the the uh, profit so that the the ability to work in that business will deteriorate so the taxation affects the ability to work because of the it produces the purchasing power of the people up to this we'll stop here we'll continue in the next class okay students thank you thank you sir okay good